Hey y'all, a um, couple days ago I finished reading Tell Me Three Things by Julie and then some French last name that I'm not even going to try to say because I don't want to butcher it. It's spelled B-U-X-B-A-U-M. I'm assuming that's a French last name. Um, I don't actually know for sure. She lives in LA, so that's just my guess based off the spelling. I don't actually know. I don't know anything about French. Anyway, so tell me three things. Um, the premise is that this girl named Jessie um, has lost her mom to cancer, and it's been a couple of years. Her dad has remarried, and they have moved to L.A. to move in with his new wife. She has a stepbrother her own age. Um, nothing dramatic happens there, don't worry. Well, maybe you do want that story. I didn't want that story. <laughs> that doesn't happen. Um... But it's her coping with, still coping with the loss of her mother and also then coping with this dramatic change. Her dad is kind of distant. She doesn't connect to her stepfamily. She's now going to this really rich kid school. Tuition is through the roof and her stepmom is paying for it because she is extremely well often involved in movie industry and whatever. Um, but just a couple of days into her at the new school, I think it's just a couple of days, um, she gets a random email from someone who's being anonymous. They call themselves somebody, nobody. And they're kind of like, Hey, let me help you out. Ask me anything about this school. Like I know it's a lion's den. Talk to me. I'm here for you, but I want to stay anonymous. And at first she's like, is this a joke? But then eventually they start having this ongoing online conversation and talk for a very long time. And so that's the premise of the plot. And I didn't think that there was a lot to go off of there, but again, dealing with the death of her mom is part of it and just fitting in. And so we see her day-to-day -day life and her trying to adjust to this new school and her new life and deal with her distant father and her mother's death. But then we also get the online conversations where she feels like she can be herself because there's that protection almost of him being anonymous and it's not face-to-face, -face, it's not real human interaction, right? Um, so this book came out in March of this year. So I got it off the new books to look at shelf at the library. <laughs> um, and like I said, I didn't think there was a lot of potential to it. And as I read it, there were parts where I was like, eh, this is just meh. But other things I liked a lot. I like the way Julie, the author, handles the death of Jesse's mom. And it turns out that Julie also lost her mom as a teenager and so this was very real for her i like i just like the way that jesse talks about it in the book as the narrator is very very real and my mother is still alive which i am so grateful for um but i just it was real you could feel the emotion you could see how only people who had gone through that experience would connect to certain things she says and thinks it was very, very interesting. Um, she's got some great quotes in there just dealing with death. Um, at one point, um, let's see, I'm trying to find the right quote. Oh yeah, so at one point, Jessie, the main character, she says, speaking of her mother, she will never see who I grow up to be. That great mystery of who I am and who I am meant to be finally, answer, finally asked and answered, sorry. Um, and that's just true. Like she's growing up and I think that's just an interesting way to look at it because Jessie's continuously kind of looking to the future. She's thinking about college in a couple of years and where she'll be because she doesn't like her current life. And she often thinks my mom's not going to be there for those steps. And I'm sure that everybody goes through that. Everyone who's lost a family member like that is like, they're not going to be here for this and this and this and this, whatever those big monumental steps in life are or moments and events. But I just, I liked that concept of she'll never see who I'm supposed to be and who I have the potential to be because everybody has so much potential. And that's something that Jessie finds in this book. She kind of finally recognizes her potential and recognizes her worth. It's kind of a self-esteem storyline as well as a grief storyline and as well as a first love storyline. And once I finally finished it, I liked it better once I was done with this book because it all just was woven so well together, which I couldn't see until I was looking at it in hindsight. Then I saw how nicely it was woven and how well the different threads of Jessie's life and her different issues are so interwoven, which is totally real life. 
And so I think that's why ultimately I did enjoy this book because it was so, so real, so real. Um, downsides. Y'all know, if you've watched my videos before, I hate swearing in books. I hate it. I think that most of the time you can easily get around it. I don't like swearing in real life either, if you were wondering. I don't like it at all. Um, but I think that it shows talent as a writer if you can get your point across of how angry or upset someone is without them having to swear about it. There, are, um, yeah, so that's something that I didn't love. There were a couple of scenes in general that I didn't love. Some conversations between Jessie and her friend Scarlett from before she moved that I didn't like. Um, just because I, I don't want I don't want swearing in my books. I don't want sex scenes in my books. I want, I like lighthearted, well not lighthearted because this was not lighthearted. We're dealing with the death of her mother and a giant move and issues, right? Drama of high school. Um, that's not necessarily lighthearted. I like, I don't know, I want my books to be like PG or whatever. Let's say that. And so there were conversations between her and her friend that I didn't love, but again, it's all real. This is what real people talk about. These are real, relationships. And so that, in that way, it was very well done. Um, totally real. So if you don't mind that stuff in your books, definitely read this. Um, I think it's one of the truest books, emotionally truthful books I've read in a long time. Maybe not a I don't know, whatever. I just reread Harry Potter. And so this was the first book I had read after rereading Harry Potter. So definitely drastically different. But anyway, um, Overall, I enjoyed it, I think. I really, really liked the ending. I like the way she kind of wrapped it up. She did a good job. It's not, all my problems are solved, but it's, this is a huge step in a good direction. Things are gonna be okay. You know, it gives you that feeling of hope that I think is very, very important in YA fiction. Um, so it's truthful, it's realistic, it's hopeful. Yeah, overall, I think, that it was good and and I think that I am maybe interested in reading more by her because of how again how real and honest it is so yeah there you go it was called tell me three things can you see that tell me three things by Julie B U X B A U M again I don't want to ruin her last name with my attempt to say it anyway um try it out let me know what you think. Keep reading.